Welcome to Electro Online. So what's so special about iron? It turns out that iron has a very unique property which makes it a very unique element in the universe. We probably owe our existence to the fact that iron has a special property. So what am I talking about? It turns out that of course inside the cores of stars, stars fuse lighter elements into heavier elements and by doing so they convert some of the mass of the nucleus into energy. That's why stars put out such an enormous amount of energy because according to the equation E equals mc squared you can see that a small amount of mass multiplied times a very big number because c squared, c being the speed of light squared which is a huge number produces an enormous amount of energy. So stars produce energy by converting mass to energy. They do that by fusing smaller elements into bigger elements hydrogen to helium, helium to beryllium, beryllium to carbon, and so forth. And each time when you have a nuclear fusion process, the average density of the nucleus decreases. The mass per nuclear particle, as we call it. So the average density per nucleus decreases by converting mass to energy as the el these elements are being fused. And that's what fuels the stars. That's, what, that's why stars put out such an enormous amount of energy. So, Nuclear fusion causes a release of energy by converting mass to energy. If you try to go the other direction, then of course you need energy in order to build up lighter and lighter elements because now the average density of the nucleus has to increase, so somehow you have to convert mass back to energy. I'm, I'm sorry, energy back to mass by going in the opposite direction. So by the time you get to iron, iron has the most dense nucleus of all the elements on the periodic table. So when you try to fuse iron into the next element, instead of taking more mass and converting energy, now you need energy to convert it back to more mass. Because notice, and I think I might have misspoken here, what I meant to say is that iron has the least density of all the nuclei. So by trying to fuse it into the next element, you have to make it more dense, which requires more energy. So trying to fuse iron into the next element, that would take energy, not provide energy. So that means that from an endothermic process, it becomes an exothermic process. Or in this case, I guess when we go from here to here, we have what we call an exothermic process because we're releasing energy. Then when we try to go further, it becomes an endothermic process. It tries to grab energy in order to get to the next element. So that means that all the elements on the periodic table beyond iron, instead of being fused, they can be fissioned. Fission means you can break them into smaller nuclei. And of course, that only happens to the unstable ones that are in this side of the periodic table, such as uranium and plutonium. They're not stable elements and they will fission into smaller, smaller elements, thus providing energy, thus again converting mass to energy by trying to fission heavy elements into lighter ones. But of course, that can only happen until you reach iron, because when you try to fission iron into a smaller element, that will not give off energy, that will also require energy. In other words, iron cannot be fused, trying to go to a heavier element, and it cannot be fissioned, trying to go to a lighter, ele lighter element, and provide energy. Either direction will require more energy. And so that's why when the core of a star fills up with iron, as it happens with those supermassive red giants, well, then it cannot go anywhere else. If it tries to fuse iron into the next heavy element, it requires energy. If it tries to fission, it requires energy. So at that point, anything the star tries to do will simply require energy. The heat will try to get iron, will try to get the star to fuse iron into the next heavy element. All of a sudden, heat is grabbed out of the core, the core cools down, the radiation pressure is no longer dead there and the entire core will simply collapse in a supermassive explosion called the type 2 supernova. And so iron's property of it not being able to be fission or fused is the key to those vast explosions and during those explosions all the other elements on the periodic table beyond iron are being, are being uh, fused by providing the enormous amount of energy necessary to do that fusion process. So, if it wasn't for the fact that iron cannot be fused in the next heavy element by giving off energy, the fact that it absorbs energy, causing the core to collapse and having a supernova explosion, those other elements that, of course, we have in our bodies and that we walk on, because that's what the Earth is made out of, those elements wouldn't exist if it wasn't for those explosions.
So we owe our existence essentially to the fact that iron does exactly what it does, it refuses to be fused and give off additional energy, and that is how it is. No, anything, anything there. I just grabbed the two more common elements that we're aware of. Okay, so it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't see, there's no choice to start with hydrogen, but then the other end. Because there's no end element. You can have an in, infinite number of heavy elements if you just make them, right? So there's no really upper limit as to the existence of elements. Okay, okay so we exist because of iron. Thank you, iron. Ha, ha, ha.